as with most procedures, it's very important to consider anesthesia. And it's especially important when you're extracting a third molar tooth in a patient who's totally awake. Now, we'll get these a lot at our practice. We have a lot of people that come in, they don't care to have any sort of sedation. They just want to get the tooth out with local. And that's totally fine. And in most cases, you would be able to do that as long as you have a patient who is fairly cooperative. Now, in these cases, what we're going to do is most times we're going to just do our uh, inferior alveolar nerve block and our buccal nerve block. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to wait for that to settle in. We're going to get started on the case. And sometimes, though, you may find that you do these and the patient seems numb. You can poke around. They're not really feeling anything. But as soon as you get working on that tooth, uh, they're feeling it a bit and maybe more than they should be, right? Hard to know sometimes, but if the patient's feeling uh, more than they say they should be, you should probably trust them. Now, in order to overcome that, there's a few things you can do. And one would be from our video in uh, a previous lesson, which was the intraoral cervical plexus technique, and that's to infiltrate down into the buccal. That will often give you a little bit better anesthesia when the patient's feeling pressure or discomfort down more at the angle of their jaw and everything else seems to be um, pretty numb. And research has showed that there's a lot of accessory innervation that that block will actually help to knock out. It's not a readily accepted block as of yet in terms of mainstream adoption in GP offices, that sort of thing, but it is in the literature if you want to look it up. Now, the way that you could approach this <clears throat> would be to think about your anatomy a little bit. So when we look back here, what we see is we've got the third molar here, and we've got very thin cortical bone. And what we know about this is when you infiltrate, you have a better chance of getting anesthesia through thin cortical bone than you would if it was very thick. So infiltrating over on this buccal segment, not a lot of hope of getting this tooth much more numb. But if you look at the lingual, certainly there is, right? And what we're seeing here is we're seeing the mylohyoid ridge and these apices of the third molar are typically underneath of there. That's why we have to be concerned when we're trying to dig out a third molar root tip that we don't push it down under that muscle into the submandibular space. And these teeth will at times even be perforated through this cortical bone. So the roots are actually sticking out under the soft tissue. Now, what better chance would you have to get this tooth numb than to deposit your anesthesia right here? Now, a lot of you might say, well, the lingual nerve is there. We don't want to be poking around down there. You're right, the lingual nerve runs along the lingual of these teeth, but it's generally higher up as it passes back here and it drops lower as it comes anteriorly. So most times, if you're gonna be injecting in this area, you're pretty well in the safe zone. So make sure that you have good visibility, good access. A lot of times I'll put a bit of a bend into the needle like this, and that allows you then to get in under the tongue and deposit your anesthetic right down in here. And you'll see where I'm at here if I can get a good angle. Right there would be the perfect place for it. And basically, put it in there, put in whatever, half a carp, let it sit for a little while, and you'll be amazed at how many times that helps you to get this tooth a lot more comfortable for that patient, often enough that you can continue the procedure and get it out with no problems.